in, in the book, The Road to Ruin, you warned also that there were military vehicles stationed all around America getting ready for the riots. We're already finished. I hate to say this, but I think it's the end of the American empire. Federal Reserve Bank, our treasury, and our government has messed up the US dollar so much. Jim, you made a comment early and it just kind of passed by. You said the new Great Depression. Are we in a new Great Depression? We are. Uh, and by the way, thank you for mentioning my last book, Aftermath. And if you have a copy of Aftermath handy, go to page pages 288 to 291. Now, this book came out in July 2019. In those pages, I say there'll be a pandemic in the next three years and there'll be social disorder and riots in the streets. Well, it's so, our fault. It's your fault. We knew it was Well, <laughs> anyone who read that book can't say they weren't warned. So, again, to read the whole book by all means. But Look, can, can, Jim, Jim, can I say one more thing? In, in the book, The Road to Ruin, you warned also that there were military vehicles stationed all around America getting ready for the riots. Sure. And and uh, and they uh, we were even closer with the, with the book Aftermath. So everything we're seeing now was in that book, but I have a new book coming out, January 12th, this publication day, it's available for pre-sale on Amazon. But Kim, to your point, the title of the book is The New Great Depression, Winners and Losers in a Post-Pandemic World. Uh, so if Aftermath a year ago told you where we are today, this book will tell you where we're gonna be a year from now or even further ahead. Can you give us a hint? <laughs> uh, well, we, we are in a depression. A lot of people don't know what a depression is because they, um, First of all, no one's ever lived through it. If, if you have a living memory of a U.S. depression, you are 90 years old. And there, my mother's 90, so she remembers it. We still talk about it, but you're 90 or older if you remember the depression. So very, very few people in that category. Most people have never lived through a depression. They don't know what it is. They assume it's must be a continuous declining GDP. It's not. A two, two quarters of GDP, of declining GDP, is the technical definition of a recession. But a depression means depressed growth. You can have growth in a depression. It's just the growth is below potential. So if your potential is three, three and a half percent, and your actual growth is one and three quarters percent, that gap between say three and a half and one and three quarters, that gap is depressed growth. Now, if your debt is going up five, six, seven, eight percent a year, which it is, and if your growth is one and a half, two percent a year, which it is, which it will be, um, in, in my forecast, then your debt to GDP ratio, when your debt's going up faster than your income, you're going broke. It's as simple as that. So, um, but, but people aren't, uh, we're looking at intergenerational changes. And, and again, it all comes out of the COVID pandemic, but the pandemic, the social unrest and the depression that all converged in 2020, this is, we're not going to be out of this in 30 weeks or 30 months. So it's going to take 30 years to get out of it. A lot of people don't know. The stock market reached a certain level in 1929. Do you know when it, re and then it crashed 90%. Do you know when it regained the 1929 level, when it got back to the 1929 level? 1954. It took 25 years to get back to where it was in 1929. The stimulus money they print, everybody says, oh God, you know, it's because of they shut the economy down and this and that. Everybody says, yeah, so they're gonna give me PPP and all of this stuff. So just remember this, that money comes from production. And when we pay people not to produce, which is PPP and all that, we're just paying them not to revolt. You know, and that's what happened during the Roman times. And so I, that's why I say it's the end of the American empire, because our money is corrupt. Now, would I take the money? Absolutely. You know, we're talking about, don't fight the government, don't fight the Fed, don't fight politics. You know, if they're going to give me a thousand bucks, I'll take it, but I would convert it into either gold, silver, or Bitcoin. So now it's it's all coming apart at the seams. So gold, silver, Bitcoin, you know, it's not, they're not the answer, but they're kind of an insurance policy against the incompetence of our leaders. It's always been socialism, you know, but they don't tell you that. The Federal Reserve Bank is a socialist or a communist organization. But they'll never tell you that. The more I studied, the more I felt I needed a shower. 
You know, I mean, they, they were just lying to us. When the market crashed in 2020, March of 2020, only 16% of the teachers, firefighters, and police officers' pension was funded, 16%. So they had $16 for every 100 they owed. Now it's down to six. They're broke. So they're covering all of this up. So they want to bring UBI in so they can just mass produce money. And then the, so they're going to pay people not to work so they can escape. There's a thing called the debt to GDP ratio. So when the thing crashed in 2020 in March, the debt went up and the GDP, the gross domestic product went down. So that, that's what I was saying. So we produce less debt went up, GDP went down. And if this coronavirus comes back, which I think it will, we're, we're bankrupt because the debt to GDP, once debt to GDP passes 90%, we're bankrupt. Today it's 115% debt to GDP in America. So we're already bankrupt. And so the UBI is no different than the, the Romans paying the Roman citizens to sit in the Colosseum and watch the, the Dallas Cowboys play the Green Bay Packers, you know, it's, nothing really changes. I mean, people are that stupid, but they don't know. They really don't know. We're just paying them not to revolt. What they're doing is they're propping up zombies. And zombies are companies that are mismanaged, like Hertz right now is completely bankrupt. Boeing is bankrupt. Uh, the cruise ships are bankrupt. Ford's bankrupt. And the Fed, the Treasury, and Wall Street keep propping them up. Well, it makes it harder for your generation. You know, like I always said to you, the millennials, man, you guys have been screwed. You know, it's, it's a monetary war, which is why I always ask the question, why doesn't school teach us about money? That's not an accident. So that's why, you know, I say to your generation, with that iPhone, become an entrepreneur. You know, so you don't need the job security. Nothing wrong with it, but you don't want to need it. And you don't need the UBI. You don't need the paycheck. If you can get off of needing that paycheck, you're free. If you can make your own money, you know, you want to be anti-fragile. You know, the, the harder it, the, it's on you, the stronger you want to get. And as you know, there's a lot of snowflakes out there and a lot of cream puffs and a lot of wimps. And it's their right to be a wimp, but they're still wimps. I was watching CNBC. That's another communist organization, but uh, they had this guy named Jim Grant get on there and he was explaining exactly what I'm saying to you guys. You can't just keep printing this money. And so CNBC asked him, I said, so what should you do? He says, buy gold and buy silver. He says, they're going to destroy the dollar. And the guy, Joe Kernan of CNBC says, ah, that's such an old idea. You know, gold and silver have been here since God created this earth. And Bitcoin is the next replacement to that. So for your generation, it really is to get outside of what mainstream media says is the right way to think and think for yourselves. People still say to their kids, go to school, work hard, you know, save money, save, save, save till it hurts. It's, it's really stupid. And that's because people cannot think because they went to school to get that job. If I'm trying to figure out the Fed and the markets, I better use the same tools the Fed is using or else I'm going to miss it. So anyway, we're in for deflation, not inflation. Uh, we may get to inflation, we'll, we'll probably end up there. I agree it'll end up there. But we're gonna go, we're actually living through a deflationary episode right now. And everyone's like, oh, look at all the Fed money printing. They, they printed $3 trillion in the last six months, which they did, they did print $3 trillion in the last six months. So that's gonna cause inflation, no. That's what Milton Friedman said, Milton Friedman was wrong, the Austrian economists are wrong. Peter Schiff is wrong. Everybody, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'll tell you why. I'm not just going to throw this stuff out there and not explain it. Money supply has nothing to do with inflation. Inflation is caused by velocity, which is the turnover of money. So let's just say you took the money supply from $4 trillion to $7 trillion, which is what the Fed did. Nominal GDP is money supply times velocity. This is just the quantity theory of money. This is Milton Friedman's famous equation, which actually goes back to Irving Fisher in the 1920s. Well, they took the money supply of seven trillion. Okay, what's seven trillion times zero? It's zero. zero. In other words, if you don't have velocity, you don't have an economy. The thing that drives inflation is not the money supply, it's the turnover of money. That's the, that's the velocity. That's the zero in my case. 
Velocity has been dropping since 1998. It didn't start in 2008. It didn't start in 2020. It's been dropping like a stone since uh, 1998. Velocity is the turnover of So let me give you a very simple example. So let's say I go out for dinner and I tip the waiter. And the waiter takes my tip and she takes the taxi cab home and tips the taxi driver. And the taxi driver takes the tip and fills up his car with gasoline, okay? In that example, my dollar had velocity of three. There was the, the waiter tip, the taxi driver tip, and the gasoline. So my dollar supported three dollars of goods and services. So that's velocity of three. What if I stay home and watch TV and don't spend any money? The velocity is zero. We're already finished. I hate to say this, but I think it's the end of the American empire. Our Federal Reserve Bank, our treasury, and our government has messed up the US dollar so much that they have to find a way to keep people happy. And when we pay people not to produce, which is PPP and all that, we're just paying them not to revolt.